What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. It's so wonderful to see your smiling faces here again, metaphorically of course, we're not there yet with our technology, maybe someday. I am so excited today because today we are continuing with the Resistance Training 101 series. If you have not seen the first two videos in this series about load and about volume, you can check those out in the description below or I'll put a card or whatever that jazz, YouTubers and all their stuff when they link, it's cool. Go ahead and check those out because those will inform what we're talking about today, which is intensity. Now, intensity is one of my favorite topics to talk about because I am a coach. I love to program intensity and to teach my clients about the reps and reserve and the RPE model. I think it's really fascinating. It's one of the greater innovations that we've made in resistance training to kind of help gauge our intensity on a day-to-day -day basis so that we're not going into the gym and slamming our head into the wall or we're not going into the gym and basically taking a nap because we're not training hard enough. So today we're gonna attempt to answer the age old question of how hard you should train. A million people have done this video and I'm gonna throw my, my hat in the ring because I think that I have a pretty good grasp of RPE, being a coach and using RPE training for the past, I don't know, year, year and a half. I can kind of speak to this and how it helps new lifters understand where they should be in their intensity in training. Before we get into that, if you like the content we put out on this channel, it would mean so much to me if you would subscribe, like the video, share it around, do all that jazz. It really helps the algorithm to get this content out to more people. So I appreciate you a bunch. Without further ado, let's get into the meat of today's topic. So as we touched on a bit earlier, intensity is simply how hard you are training in a given session. Usually we define intensity on a session by session basis rather than volume where we can sometimes define it on a week by week basis or a mesocycle by mesocycle basis. Intensity is that one training bout that you're doing per day. The half hour, hour to an hour and a half, however long you train, how hard is it? Now, in a strength context, so say you're a power lifter or an Olympic weight lifter, you usually will train your big lifts at a percentage of your one rep max. So if you wanna do rep work, let's take the squat for example. Let's say today you come into the gym and you have prescribed three sets of six reps at 67% of your one rep max. Now, this means that you have an accurate one rep max test that you can work off of. So already you've built up a little bit of a training base, right? You're not gonna walk in on the first day in the gym and say, I'm gonna rep out 70% of my one rep max. You have no idea what your one rep max is because this is your first time in the gym, right? So already you've got a year, maybe less of training behind you, an accurate representation of what your run, one rep max is, meaning you have tested that one rep max. If you wanna learn more about testing one rep maxes, I have a video about that, go check it out. You then will take the percentage and that will be your working weight for the day. So that's your intensity. Now, this works really well for the bigger compound lifts, obviously your squat, your bench, your deadlift, overhead press in some cases, maybe even a row, right? But you're really not gonna test your one rep max for a bicep curl or a lateral raise or something like that. And if you are, good luck keeping your tendons intact. That sounds like a terrible idea. Please don't do that. I'm not telling you to do that. We needed something else to kind of determine where intensity was going to lie for that day. And if you're training more in a bodybuilding context, you may not be utilizing those compound lifts as much as if you were training in a strongman powerlifting or weightlifting context, right? Because the goal is general hypertrophy, you want to do as much volume as you can for the least amount of recovery cost, right? And those bigger compound lifts can be very taxing on your overall system and can have a way bigger recovery cost. So you may gravitate more towards the Smith machine squat rather than a regular barbell back squat or a leg press, something like that that's not going to be as high of a recovery cost. And in that case, you probably won't have a one rep max. So we needed something to determine how intense your training needed to be. Welcome to the wonderful world of reps in reserve or rate of perceived exertion. I know you've heard me talk about this before. I talk about it all the time because it's such a powerful tool. If this is your first time clicking onto this channel, let's go over rate of perceived exertion and reps in reserve. So reps in reserve is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Imagine you have a well of reps and you go through a set of bicep curls. Let's say you get through 10 at a given weight, right? So your weight stays constant, 30 pounds. You go through a set of 10, 
and you ask yourself the question after that set, how many more could I have done if I was forced to do it? If I had no other choice, my family was hanging off a cliff and a Bond villain was gonna drop him over the side of a ravine unless I did more reps till complete failure, meaning you could not move your muscles to do another rep. How many more did I have in the tank? So you have to ask yourself that question. And then you have to be honest with yourself about that question. If the answer is three, then you had three reps in reserve. And guess what? That equates to the inverse rate of perceived exertion of seven. Three reps in reserve equals seven rate of perceived exertion. Eight rate of perceived exertion, RPE, equals two reps in reserve. So they're inverses, they work together. So that's a very basic breakdown of those tracking systems. Now, they do have some shortcomings. For beginners especially, it is really, really difficult to accurately rate your rate of perceived exertion or your reps in reserve. You're not used to the feeling of taking a set to muscular failure. You're not used to taking a set to technical failure, meaning your technique starts to break down, but your muscles have a little bit of juice in them. There's a lot of nuance to training to failure that you're not there yet, right? especially if you've been in the gym for less than six months to a year. You really start to develop those systems and you really start to understand what it takes to push the more time that you practice taking sets to failure. So it can be very difficult. Now, does that mean that beginners should avoid this style of training? I don't think so. I think at least learning about it at the beginning of your fitness journey in the gym can help you kind of start to ask yourself that question of how many reps do I have in reserve and start to really understand, you know, I said it was three reps in reserve, but it really felt like a four or a five. You start to build that library of what actually feels like a tough set versus a moderate set versus an easy set. I don't think it's ever too early to start learning that stuff. If it becomes overwhelming and it's distracting you from effective training, then of course, Put it in the back pocket, say I'm just gonna train till where I feel like I've done a hard set and then leave it alone and then pick it back up later as you become more and more experienced. That's totally fine, but I do think that it's something that if you introduce early, you can get more benefit out of it. The other good news is as a beginner, you really don't have to worry about reps and reserve or RPE because you are in this beautiful state of newbie gains where you could come in and do pretty much anything if it's in a resistance training context and you're still gonna build muscle. It's just the way that the, the body works in response to novel stimulus, especially very novel stimulus, meaning it's the first couple of times that you've trained that muscle, even semi-effectively. People have gained muscle doing garbage programs for years, right? I, I, when I started, I would go in, do a couple machines, be like, ah, that's good for the day. And I was still gaining muscle and I thought that that was gonna be great. At a certain point, that does fall off. But at that point, guess what? You've started to effectively utilize these intensity techniques so you can kind of transition from that beginner phase to more of an intermediate phase, right? So it all works in this beautiful symbiotic way as you transition out of the newbie period, you get to use these cool intensity techniques and now you're an intermediate. Oh yeah, my RPE was eight. I'm, I'm juicing. Not really. Maybe. Who knows? All right, now that we've defined our terms, let's return to the position stand paper that we've been looking at, the IUSCA meta-analysis, which Again, a meta-analysis is just a, an analysis of all the literature in a given space on a given topic. And it's an incredible paper. It's linked in its entirety down below. I encourage you to go read it. Today, we're going to talk about the intensity section of that paper. Basically, from the dawn of time, there have been two camps. There's the camp that says you have to get into the gym and if you can walk out of the gym after your exercise, you did not train hard enough. Yeah, brother, we gotta go in and bleed on the weight, you know? Okay, there's another camp where it says, listen, if I can protect my ligaments and my joints and I don't want any pain at all, and I just go in and do X amount of sets, a little bit difficult, I'm still gonna gain as much muscle. Both camps have very ardent supporters and both camps are semi-correct, right? As with most things in life, it is somewhere in the middle. Obviously we need to train hard and we need to present a novel stimulus, but like I said before, we need to be able to recover from that training. Let's take it to the literature itself and see what the IUSCA has to say about its recommendation for how hard you should train. 
First of all, it says for novice lifters, and I'm quoting here, novice lifters can achieve robust gains in muscle mass without training at close proximity to failure. Excellent. Get in there, do some hard sets to where you feel like you're getting a little bit of a burn, a little bit of a pump, but you're not failing anything. It goes on to say highly trained lifters may benefit from taking some sets to momentary muscular failure. In such cases, its use should be employed somewhat conservatively, perhaps limiting application to the last set of a given exercise. All right, great start. So let's take it through a typical day and try and work out where we're gonna utilize that pushing to momentary failure. So it's a leg day. You walk into the gym, it's gonna be a pretty intense leg day. You've planned it, you're ready to go, You've your nutrition is on point, you're ready for a hard session. You wanna squat first because of it's compound lift, right? You wanna get a little bit more abdominal work in, you wanna utilize everything that the squat is great for. But the squat may not be great for a, a all out, balls to the wall, failure set because it's a little bit dangerous to fail. If you don't know how to bail out of the lift properly, if you don't have safeties, if you don't have a spotter, it can be a difficult lift to effectively push to failure. So instead, you're gonna go to about three, two or three RIR, right? Now, once you get done with squats, you move to the leg press. A machine, it has safety set up, you feel a little bit more comfortable really pushing yourself to that point of absolute muscular failure, destroying your quads safely, right? This would be a good time to implement a really hard all out set, pushing yourself to failure. So maybe you do two sets uh, to one to two RIR, and then on your last set, like the IUSCA has recommended, you're really gonna push and you're gonna go all the way out until you cannot do the lift anymore, great. Finish that set, do some more accessory work, maybe to failure, maybe not, depending on how you've planned intelligently. And then you go, you go ahead and say, I trained hard, I'm getting out of the gym, and you're gonna go get some nutrients in you and continue that growth. It's all about being intelligent. It's all about utilizing these tools as intelligently as possible, right? We don't wanna go in and just bang our head into a wall, but we do need to train hard. So find that middle ground, and it's different for everybody. That's why it's a rate of perceived exertion for you. That's the beauty of training, is finding these variables that work best for you. Again, I just wanna say, if you're going to employ failure training, make sure you're doing it safely with a spotter present if it's an exercise where you need a spotter, or if it's a machine that has safeties that you can rely on to just drop the weight when you've reached that point of muscular failure. It is very important that we train hard, but it is also very important that we stay safe for ourselves and for everyone else in the gym. So just make sure you're doing that when you're going for a really tough session. So there you have it folks, the 101 on intensity. Now, 101 meaning very, very baseline. There are tons of different ways to increase your intensity. There are tons of different exercises that can be done safely to failure. I encourage you to seek those out. I encourage you to understand that rest is just as important as training as hard as you can, right? So it's all about that relationship. There's definitely more research to be done. I hope this video will be a jumping off point for you to continue your research into how to employ intensity in your resistance training to get the most out of your resistance training and to have the physique or the body that you want. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the continued support. If you have any questions about intensity, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'm there all the time hanging out. You can join our Discord if you want a more pointed discussion with me. It's linked down below. Instagram, Twitch, all that jazz. Just follow your boy, man. I'm putting out some good stuff, right? I would appreciate it if you did. Again, share this video around. Have a great day, everybody. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your mental health. Take care of your physical health. Get strong and stay strong. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.